Hi class, welcome to topic two, DQ2. So this is our second DQ for week two. These, this DQ is gonna be very important because this is going to be the most similar to that very first sheet on our major assignment one. So what you'll be doing for this DQ is you will be setting up your budget. Um, so you can think of this as a monthly budget. Um, that's kind of gotta be the best way to do it. And then that'll help you prepare for that major assignment one. When you enter your budget items in, you will need 10 items and you need at least three categories to have more than one item in each category. So what I've done here is I've entered in my items. I have 10 items total, as you can see, and then I have my three categories with more than one item in them. I could spread out them more so you can have more items than 10. You can have more categories than three with more than one. You can put as many items in here as you want. You need at least 10 and at least three categories to have more than one item. These are the same requirements as major assignment one. Okay, so you're gonna put your items in first. These can be any of your monthly utilities. You can be your actual utilities or you can make them up. You can have fun with it. Um, just make sure you have 10 items. Notice how I've entered them all in as currency with two decimal places. That's my formatting I'm following, currency with two decimal places. Okay, so after you enter your items in, what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the total for each category. When we calculate the total for each category, we're gonna use an Excel function called sum. This is very helpful when we are totaling up items and it's really helpful for a budget. It's really helpful for budgets because I can sum up all of the cells in my budget category, whether they're filled in or not, I can sum all of them up so then if, I, if my budget changes, I can go back in and edit all my values and then Excel will automatically update the sums for me. So that's why this is gonna be very helpful for us. Okay, so let's start with transportation. I wanna calculate my total for my transportation. I only have one item in my transportation, it's $12. So I know my total here should end up being $12. I'm gonna start with my equal sign. We're using an Excel function here. So we're gonna start by typing in that word sum. When you use an Excel function, you'll see these ones autofill. So you can click on these and you can use them. We want that sum one, that's the first one that shows up. If you want to have it autofill in for you, you hit tab. So if I hit tab, see how it turns it to all, clap, all caps and it opens that parenthesis. You use tab, not enter. If you don't wanna use that, you can type it in lowercase, open the parentheses, it's still gonna work out the same, okay? So lowercase, uppercase, that's okay. Make sure you spell the word correctly, open the parentheses and have your equal sign. We gotta have that equal sign. Now what we're gonna do is after that parentheses opened, we're gonna select all the cells in the transportation category. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna select it all the way down to the end of the table. Now notice in my formula, it's kind of hidden, but you can see it up here. It auto filled in that range. So we are summing all the cells from B12 all the way down to B61 at the end of the table. So it put in that range for us and it put that colon in the middle to represent that this is a range. So after you select, it'll input that range for you. You'll close the parentheses and then hit enter. Okay, so here's the fun part. So let's say my monthly budget has changed. I now need more money for transportation. I have to pay gas because I'm driving to work. So let's say I put in here another $50. Watch my total as I hit enter. It updates for me. It updated to 62. So this is why that sum function is really handy. And it's especially handy if you put in empty cells to sum as well. So as your budget builds, you can keep updating these totals. And then I could change these. So let's say my transportation changed from 12 to 13. I change that, updates the value for me. So it'll keep updating the value as you go. Okay, so let's finish out the rest of these sums. So I type my equal sign, type out the word sum, open the parentheses, and this time I'm doing the bills category. So I'll highlight everything in the bills category, close my parentheses, and I'll keep going. Equals sum, open parentheses, now do the food. Close your parentheses. So you can close it down here. You don't have to scroll up to the top to close it. So notice I selected, type my close parentheses, 
hit enter and I'll bring you back up to the top. There it is. Housing, do the same thing, equals sum, open parentheses, highlight your housing. Close the parenthesis, hit enter. There's my sum total. Keep following the same process. Equal sign, the word sum, Woo, the word sum not search. Make sure you watch that word. Sometimes it auto fills the wrong thing. It happens. Highlight the clothing. Close the parenthesis, hit enter. And then let's do the last one, the other category. Type my equal sign, type out the word sum, open my parentheses, highlight the other category. Okay, so these are all my budget totals. I've calculated all of them with the sum function. That's what I wanted. So I should see that equals sum and then your range inside that sum. And then for each of them, notice how they're all formatted as currency with two decimal places. Depending on how you enter your values down in here, you may or may not have to do the formatting after you do the sum function. Um, just remember, if these values don't turn up to be currency, if they don't have that dollar sign with two decimal places, highlight all the ones you want to format, right click, go under format cells, and then make sure you choose currency, two decimal places, and then it'll get all of that adjusted for you. Okay, so we've put our budget items in, we've calculated our totals, now let's make a pie chart. All right, so we need to make a pie chart. We wanna see how our money is getting divided up to make sure our money is actually going where we think it's going. Okay, so all of our charts are gonna be found under this insert tab in Excel. So if you go up next to home, it's right there next to home, insert. All of the charts are gonna be in the middle here. The way you wanna do a chart is you wanna start by highlighting the data you want in your chart. So I, we are gonna make a chart for the totals. So I'm not gonna highlight the blue cells, I'm only gonna highlight these green cells. When I highlight these cells, I'm gonna highlight the numbers along with the category titles. I'm gonna do the category titles as well because Excel will autofill the key for me as long as I do this. If you highlight just those numbers, you're not gonna get a good axis, you're not gonna get a good title in your chart. You need to have an axis that labels stuff for you, you need to have an appropriate chart title. So if you highlight these categories along with the values, that's gonna help that process along. Okay, so I highlight all those green cells. I'm gonna go up to my charts. Here is the pie chart. So I could go here, I could choose a chart, I could choose a 2D, I could choose a 3D, that's up to you. Or I could go under recommended charts. When you click on that recommended charts, it'll open up this window for you, find the pie chart and then hit okay. When your pie chart is open, you can drag it, you can move it around. When you have these dots around the border, so when it's selected, so if I click out here, the dots are gone. Click back on my chart, the dots are there. As long as you have this chart selected, you'll be able to format it differently. So we've got the design and the format tabs. With your pie chart formatting, what I wanna see, I wanna see a chart title that's anything besides the words chart title. We've got a chart title of total, that works. We can go ahead and change it. We can change this to our monthly budget if we wanted to. If you have chart title there, make sure you change it. Anything besides chart title. The labels, the key, I need to see how the colors are lining up with each of your categories. So I have the blue, transportation, red, bills. This is what I wanna see. This is what Excel will auto do for you as long as you select the categories with your data. Uh, beyond that, you can choose the pie that you like best. So once you have it selected, you'll see the design tab. That design tab only appears when it's selected. See that design tab? These are all of your different options. My favorites are the ones where it displays the percentages on the slices itself. So you got the one in gray. You've got one in here in white. You've got this one with kind of a gray background. And if you wanted to too, you could highlight this, go under insert, and you could choose that 3D chart too. The 3D is pretty cool. And the same thing, when you have that 3D chart selected, you can go under design, you can pick out which one you want, and then you can move it around all you want. I need to see one pie chart. You could do multiples if you want them, but you're only required to do one. 
on that pie chart, I should see an appropriate title and then I should see your category labels on that pie chart. All right, so this completes topic two, DQ2. Let me know if you guys have any questions and then check out my extra activities in the forums for help with the extra parts of major assignment one.